How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in today's video we're going to be covering the ultimate Fortnite FPS increase guide in under 8 minutes. In this video we're going to be covering all of the settings, optimizations and tips and tricks you need to know to get the best FPS possible out of Fortnite regardless of what sort of system you are running on. Just in time for Fortnite Creative 2.0 which has just dropped. On screen now you'll see some brief gameplay of the optimized settings being used in Creative 2.0. So whether you're looking to stick with traditional battle royale or you're going to be diving deep into the Creative 2.0 mode, this video will provide you with all of the optimizations and settings you need to get the best experience possible in Fortnite for 2023. First of all, take yourself to the bottom left hand side, then search for GPU space settings, then select the graphics settings panel. Take yourself over to change default graphics. For those of you running on Windows 11, if you do see the optimizations for windowed games section, I'd recommend turning this on. We are going to make use of either the performance mode or DirectX 11 in most cases, but if you are looking to make use of DirectX 12 or full screen borderless mode inside of Fortnite, this is definitely a great option to have enabled if it's available to you. For those of you on Nvidia GPUs you should also see hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and if you do see this option in all cases I would recommend turning this to on. Next up take yourself down to the bottom once again this time typing in game space mode and selecting game mode settings. At the top here ensure that windows game mode has been switched on. We're then going to take ourselves into the windows task manager. You can quickly and easily do this by pressing control shift and escape on your keyboard. For those of you on windows 11 navigate down to this logo on the left hand side otherwise on windows 10 at the top bar navigate over to startup apps. Once inside of here go to status click Click this until all of the enabled applications are listed at the top. Inside of this list you'll find all of the applications inside of Windows that will boot automatically the moment you log in. The smaller amount of apps in this section the better. So in this scenario don't go too crazy with this, if you're not sure what something is just leave it alone. But I automatically know I don't need the AMD noise suppression.exe running so we'll select this option, go to the top right and select disable. Down here you can see I have stuff like EA Launcher, Battle.net, Epic, Discord. I don't want any of these applications opening automatically on my system, I would rather open them myself when I need them. For those of you running Windows 10, take yourself to the bottom left hand side, this time type background apps, then go to system settings. Inside of this section you'll find all of the applications that have permission to run in the background even when you're not using them. Again, if you're not sure what something is with inside of it or if it looks important such as Nvidia, AMD, Realtek, Audio Console, you can leave those options alone but for the rest of them you should turn them off. With that completed, we're then finally going to take yourself down to the bottom left hand side, type power space plan. Go to edit power plan, take yourself to the top to power options. You then want to take yourself down to where it says show additional plans click on this drop down menu. For nearly every single person watching, for the best setting with inside of it that's super quick and easy to set, just set this to high performance. If you notice that your PC is running hotter or you run into any issues using high performance, then just come back with inside of it and set this back to balanced. Next up, boot into the Epic Games Launcher. Navigate over to your library, find Fortnite with inside of it and go to the three dots, then go to options. If you do have the high resolution textures downloaded, unselect this option and select apply. Not only will you free up roughly 10 gig of drive space, but it's also going to remove those unnecessary high textures from the game, which most of you, if not all of you will not be using anyway. Another fantastic and easy to apply tweak to ensure that you have one-to-one -one mouse inputs and low latency, this time search for mouse space settings. Select mouse settings. Windows 10 on the right hand side you'll see this option. For Windows 11 it's towards the bottom and it's labeled additional mouse settings. Inside of here navigate to pointer options. We're then going to ensure that enhanced pointer precision has been unselected. We will then ensure that the mouse speed has been set to the default 6 out of 11 on the notches at the bottom. This will ensure that the mouse has zero acceleration from Windows and is a one-to-one -one raw input for everything in which you do. You could then also do this for your keyboard to lower keyboard latency. Do this by navigating to the bottom left, go to keyboard. Inside of here, make sure that the repeat delay has been set all the way to short and repeat rate has been set to fast. Go down to apply. When you first boot into the game, at this point, if you have installed a brand new Nvidia or AMD Radeon driver, it is a good idea to quickly boot into a zero build or whatever game mode you typically play. Whenever you install a new GPU driver, we want to make sure that you do play your games for about 5, 10, 15 minutes just to get rid of all of the micro stuttering whilst the shaders actually build up. Once you first boot into the game we're then going to take ourselves over to the top left hand side and go to settings. Don't pay too much attention to the fact that I'm playing at 4k, I'm simply choosing 4k as my resolution to make sure that the video looks as good as possible. Under all circumstances you want to be utilizing full screen unless you have to be using windowed full screen for some odd reason. Resolution should be set to your monitor's native resolution unless you're looking to make use of something like integer scaling which we'll be covering later on in the video. In nearly all circumstances you want to have vSync turned off unless you're utilizing G-Sync or FreeSync which we'll be covering later on in the video. For frame rate limit we're currently going to be keeping this to unlimited whilst we adjust our FPS. Rendering mode should either be set to DirectX 11 or if you do not care about graphics whatsoever use the performance mode. This will give you significantly lower latency especially for those of you on medium to low end graphics cards. Motion blur should nearly always be turned off. For in-game settings make use of any of the presets which are currently being shown on screen now. There are presets for ultra high end systems looking for the lowest latency possible. There are presets for those of you on low end systems looking for the best FPS possible or presets for those of you that are looking for a great 
great mixture of graphics settings where you still want the game to look great, but you're looking for lower latency and better FPS just to make the game run more efficiently. Simply pause the video, input the in-game settings which are listed which match your desired outcome, and we can then continue on. Past that point, the remaining in-game settings which we haven't touched, feel free to set those to your personal preference. For those of you on NVIDIA GPUs, for NVIDIA Reflex, you want to have this set to on plus boost in nearly all scenarios. If you find that your GPU is running on the hotter side with this set, if you're someone that prioritizes graphics over gameplay and you just want a decent FPS bump, but you don't need the absolute lowest latency settings possible and you want your game to still look great, DLSS is a fantastic upscaling option which can provide you with a decent FPS increase, especially for those of you playing at 1440p or 4K. Navigate down to DLSS and try out the quality mode. If quality looks good and you've noticed a decent FPS uplift, fantastic. Then try out balanced, try out performance. Keep setting this lower and lower and lower. The lower the setting in which you can set that you're happy with, the better. DLSS definitely won't be for everyone, it definitely makes the game look a bit more smoother, which comes down to aesthetic personal preference, but it's definitely a great option available to you, so make use of it if you like it. And that's it for the main in-game settings. At this point, take yourself inside of your favourite game mode and start playing the game. My only other recommendation past this point is to implement an FPS cap if possible. Capping your FPS might seem counterintuitive in a guide about getting the best FPS possible, but implementing an FPS cap correctly could actually provide you with better 1% and 0.1% low FPS, where FPS drops significantly. As your system is no longer running at 100% all of the time, it's running a lot more efficiently, allowing your 0.1 and 1% low FPS to be raised higher and not drop as low in those really demanding scenarios, is there isn't as much stress on the GPU and CPU. For the best results possible, I would highly recommend implementing an FPS cap that is a direct multiplication of your monitor's refresh rate. What I mean by this is if you have a 240Hz monitor, you can cap at 120FPS, 240FPS, 480FPS, as this will ensure that the capped FPS is in sync with your monitor's refresh rate, giving you the smoothest and silkiest gameplay possible. To implement an FPS cap, you can make use of the in-game FPS limiter, but for the best results possible, I would highly recommend navigating inside of the control panel for your GPU, heading over to the program individual settings, selecting Fortnite with inside of here, and implementing an FPS cap at the driver level instead, as this will be much more stable than utilizing the FPS cap built into the game. For those of you that want the absolute silkiest, smoothest gameplay possible, and you don't mind giving up some latency for that, I would highly recommend utilizing a proper FreeSync or G-Sync setup. If this is something you would like to experiment around with, here's how to do it properly. First of all, go to your monitor, ensure that VRR or adaptive refresh rate has been turned on. Go inside of your NVIDIA or AMD Radeon GPUs and ensure that G-Sync or FreeSync has been enabled. For AMD users, I would highly recommend actually utilizing AMD anti-lag with this, so turn this on. For NVIDIA users, navigate down to low latency mode and set this to ultra. It's then time to set up a proper FPS cap. Navigate down to max FPS for NVIDIA users or maximum frame rate for AMD Radeon users. Inside of these sections, you want to set an FPS cap 3 FPS lower than your monitor's refresh rate. So if you had a 144Hz monitor, set the FPS cap to 141. If you had 240 hertz, go with 237. The reason we're going to be going 3 FPS lower than our monitor's refresh rate is to ensure that we are constantly rendering the game inside of the VRR or VSync G-Sync window. With FPS capped, we lastly need to navigate down towards the bottom, find the VSync option and turn this to on for both AMD and Nvidia users. With that applied, boot inside of your game and the only thing you then have to do is turn VSync off inside of any game you want to utilize this on. Leave it on on the control panel and off in the game. And you'll notice that your game feels incredibly smooth. I would highly recommend utilizing something like MSI Afterburner to be able to set a custom GPU fan curve to take control of your GPU fans yourself to ensure that you are utilizing 100% fan speed when and if necessary. Keeping your GPU running cooler for longer allows your GPU to boost longer, resulting in better FPS. For those of you serious about getting the best FPS possible and the lowest latency, I would highly recommend for your next GPU driver install that you utilize either a de-bloated driver or a minimal driver. It's something I would highly recommend looking into is you can build your own custom driver, remove all of the excess features you don't want to make use of, lowering the latency, reducing the footprint on your CPU from the driver running, and overall giving you a much snappier and responsive feeling game. And there you guys have it. That is the Fortnite FPS guide in under eight minutes. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like alongside leaving any comments, suggestions, tips, or tricks in that comment section down below. Get more out of your PC and optimize it without having to spend a penny.